In the origin of metazoan, we will be discussing about the classification and relationships among the metazoan. The classification done purely on the basis of uh, morphological data or embryology has problems. And uh, it is difficult to, uh, why it is uh, very problematic, it is due to the reason that we have difficulties in the establishing the homologous characteristics and homoplasy. So homologous characteristics are the characteristics which are the similar among the different group of animals. And homoplasy means that they're how their life forms, their living structures, are this the same? That is called homoplasy. Homo means the same, plasy means the structure. So in this diagram, we have the locator tree, which outlines some of the main feature of animal evolution. So in the demo sponges, you have the sponge-like structures. The demo sponges and calcis sponges; these are much more related. And there comes the uh, eumetazoans, which are the uh, nidarians, and then comes the echinoderms and hemichordates. Before that, all of these are invertebrates. But after the chordates, there comes the vertebrates, which are the fish, right? So in the chordates, you can see the fish. And then there is another clad of arthropods, periapulids, bryozoans, annelids, brachiopods, and mollusks. So all of these are the organisms which are having an other clad, and these are developmentally as well as the evolutionarily different from the other groups. So in these locator tree outlines, you can see that how different features of organisms can be found together. For example, mollusks are having the outer shells. The arthropods are having their own structures. For example, the jointed legs. So you can see everything in each of these clads separately. So the demo sponges and calcis sponges are the simplest organism as we have discussed in the earlier diagram as well. And the, the Nidarians were, are the most basal eumetazoans. Eu means two. Metazoans means that these are the organisms which were first, uh, we can say that these are the first animals, first true animals, first true early animals which were formed. Why? Because they have some degree of motility as compared to the uh, demosponges and calcis sponges. So there are the three robust bilateral groups, bilateral uh, or, or the organism which are having the bilateral symmetry and these are recognized based on the molecular data. These are the disozoans, spiralians and deuterostomes. We will be discussing these one by one. So the protostomes, proto means before, the ectisozoans and spiralians, these are comprising the protostomes. Protostomes means, proto means the first and a, a storm means the mouth. So protostomes are the first mouth. So the in the first mouth develops directly from the blastopore by the cell growth and migration. So first, whatever the organ with which they eat, that is coming from the blastopore and that's why they are called uh, protostome. And first two groups of the organism which are called disozoans and spiralians, these are included in the protostomes. And then there comes the deuterostomes. The deuterostomes are the organisms which are containing the second mouth, right? So second mouth, however, have a mouth arising from the secondary opening. That means the mouth is not arising from the uh, primary opening or the blastopore. Instead, it is arising from the secondary opening, which is called uh, 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 the true blastopore. It is not other than uh, the blastopore. The blastopore does not make the mouth. Instead, it is making the anus. The true blastopore develops as an anus. So, uh, what are the organisms which are included in the deuterostomes? The uh, echinoderms, hemichordates, chordates, and other or, uh, uh, complex organisms are included in the deuterostomes. And we can have the classification on the basis of larval types as well. So, for example, Nopleus larva is present in the Cretaceans. Planula is present in the nidarians and trochophore larva is present in the mollusks and the polychaetes. So, you see that uh, trochophore larva is common in the mollusks and polychaetes. But does, what does it signify? It means that the mollusks and polychaetes, these are having earlier common ancestors as compared to the nidarian or crustaceans. Uh, and then there is the shell viligar, which is a developmental stage in the 
molluscs it also signifies the or identify the molluscs so any of these larval remains if you see in the fossil record that means there there is a reason to believe that these uh, particular organism or the phyla are present in in that era and uh, on the basis of uh, invertebrate uh, we have seen some of the invertebrate larvae in the fossil record invertebrate larvae are occasionally identified in the fossil record and more advanced and preparatory high tech investigate techniques have been developed in the uh, paleontology so with the help of those techniques we can identify the larval remains of the fossils and we can identify the particular organism from those larval remains as well